Hello, physics class. It's Mr. Ng, and I wanted to go through those uh, potential and kinetic energy problems that you had for homework. Here's our first problem. It says that there is a bell at the top of a tower that is 45 meters high, and the bell weighs 190 newtons. Oh, check this out. This is not in mass, but it's in newtons. Newtons is a weight, right? Newtons is m times g. So 190 newtons is m times g already. Just so you know, this is not in kilograms, that, that would be a mass. This is already in the force of gravity on it, or it's in weight. And the bell has blank energy calculated. Okay, so uh, we're going to do this in three steps. Number one, we're going to figure out the type of energy. And we're going to use the appropriate equation. And then number two, we're going to identify the variables. And then finally, let's plug in and solve. So let's start with the type of energy. Well, it's talking about a bell that's on top of a tower. It's not moving. If it's not moving, then we know it's going to be potential energy. All right, so I'm just going to write potential here because that's why that blank space is there. And I know that PE, potential energy, is equal to M g h this was in your quizlet this is just in your regular lessons or i have a different equation mg is equal to weight so another way to write pot potential energy is weight times height so there you go all i got to do is find the weight and find the height that's not hard to do uh, we have a height 45 meters above and we have a weight 190 newtons so here uh, I know that PE is going to equal to PE is going to equal to um, my weight, which is 190 newtons times 45 meters. Let me grab my handy dandy calculator here. So that's just 190 times 45. So I got my potential energy is 8550 joules joules is our unit for energy and look it's only two sig figs so it's actually going to be eight six zero zero joules here's problem number three in your homework set it says that a car is traveling with a velocity of 40 meters a second oh this is a velocity and has a mass of 1120 kilograms and i have a mass so how much uh, energy does it have and what kind of energy is it? So again, number one, I need to talk about the type of energy and the equation. Number two, let's find our variables. And then number three, let's plug in and solve. So uh, the type, well, um, it's talking about velocity, so it's moving. So I know it's definitely going to be kinetic energy. And I know that Ke is equal to, here's your second equation, 1 half mv squared. Good. And I already identified the variables. 40 meters a second is my v, and uh, 1,120 kilograms is my mass. So I know that Ke is equal to 1 half m. m is going to be 1120 kilograms times my velocity squared, which is going to be 40 squared so um i saw that some of us have been squaring the whole bit don't do that just square the velocity so here 40 squared is 1600 times 1120 divided by 2 oh it is a ton of energy <clears throat> i have my kinetic energy as 896 with three zeros joules so here uh, my sig figs is, well, this is kind of lame. It's technically only one sig fig, but let's just assume it's two. Let's just assume there's a dot there. So this is actually nine, zero, 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 ninety thousand, no, nine hundred thousand joules or nine hundred kilojoules. Done.
Okay, last problem, number 10. I, I really like this problem because it made you think about the difference between potential and kinetic energy. And in this problem, we have two objects. Uh, let's call this object one versus object two. One has a mass of two kilograms and is being lifted at a speed of two meters a second. So this thing is two kilograms and it's being lifted kind of uh, slow at two meters a second. Object two is four kilograms, so it's bigger. And it's going a little bit faster too, at three meters a second, All right? Which one has more kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is just about speed and mass, so it's obviously gonna be object two, All right? So let's do the kinetic energy of 2. It's going to be 1 half mv squared. m and v is given to us already, so it's going to be 1 half of 4 kilograms times 3 squared. So it's 2 times 9, which is 18. 18 joules. Okay, this is for object 2. Let's try it out for object 1, even though we know that object 2 is going to have way more kinetic energy. Uh, object 1 is going to be 1 half mv squared also. But this time it's going to be equal to 1 half, uh, the m this time is 2 kilograms. And then it's going to be uh, 2 meters a second squared. So this is basically going to be 4 joules, way less energy, right? So of course, object 1 wins. I mean, object uh, 2 wins. Good. Object 2. All right, let's do B. Uh, which object has more potential energy when it was lifted to a distance of 10 meters? And um, here's where a lot of you made a mistake where like you think object 1 is the answer for one of them. So uh, like object 2 was the answer for the first one. So it must be object 1. Not really. Look, they both have the same height. The height is 10 meters. So really, the only thing that matters is the mass. So which one's more massive? It's object two again. I will show you. Here, the potential energy of object two is equal to mgh. I'm gonna be lazy and just abbreviate g, not as 9.8, but as 10. So um, my uh, m is four kilograms for object two times my g, which is 10 meters a second squared times a height of 10 meters. So this is 400 joules. That's a lot. Uh, as opposed to the potential em energy of object one, it's going to be again mgh. And again, um, g and h didn't change. It's still going to be 10 meters a second squared. And um, it's going to be 10 meters. But my mass is way less. My mass is only two kilograms. All right. So this one is only 200 joules. So again, object two wins again because it's so much more massive. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Again, uh, the big takeaways for this lesson is potential energy is equal to mgh or weight times h and that um, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. And to solve it, usually I do three steps, or you should do three steps. First, identify the type of energy, identify the energy, and subsequently the equation. Number two, uh, check out the variables. And then finally, plug in and solve. Hey, thank you guys for watching.